When it happens, our prefrontal cortex lights up. It feels like a drop of water on hot stones. And if you were walking down a street, you would stop when it happens. I'm talking a bad intuition. In a distracted world, it's hard for intuition to show up. The layers of our minds are too thick, occupied with our hundreds of to-do tasks. The lockdown and isolation have created ideal conditions for intuition. We're not rushing around anymore, we are less distracted from the outside and the result is that we are more connected to ourselves. We are tuned towards the inside. In this state, we're more open for intuitive moments. Have you felt it? Have you made some encounters with it lately? Now listen carefully because it can help you to save a lot of time. In today's episode, I will tell you about a very unexpected moment which happened to me when I was in my mid-twenties sitting at a beach in Mexico on a warm summer night. I still get goosebumps just thinking about it. And I will tell you why intuition isn't just a huge time saver, but also an essential guidance tool. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode with me, Anna Yelen, the time expert. Someone who was a living question mark in the beginning of the corona times. Didn't have a clue where this will bring us. But with time, it started to change. With time, intuition started showing up more regularly, which helped me to feel guided and to stay calm. It feels like having an old pal coming back to me. It feels as if we were walking down the path together again. When I follow my intuition, I feel strong. I feel self-confident. Because it's a good feeling listening to your inner voice. You're true to yourself. But maybe intuition isn't coming from inside. Perhaps It's like I heard someone say once, intuition is a drop on the mind coming from the universe. How it functions, where it comes from, we don't know much about it yet. It's a mystical topic. Would I have believed it if this night in Mexico wouldn't have happened? I don't know. But what I know is how to tell the difference between intuition and a false feeling. A false feeling is often bedded in fear or uncertainty. It's it's a nervous energy with chattering mind and maybe even your body feels tight. Could feel like this, okay, okay, uh, I will take this decision, I'm gonna go for A. Yes, yes A, uh, or, or maybe not. Uh, is, is A really the good decision? Hmm. Why not be? Whenever it's like this, you should look at it a bit more profoundly. It could be the ego, fear or desire talking. They're more like chatters. With intuition, it's different. Intuition is very clean and pure. It comes, tells you the message and then it's gone again, in and out. When it shows up, you just know without really knowing why you know. It gives us the ability to understand something directly without analytic reasoning, bringing the gap between the conscious and non-conscious parts of our mind. Intuition is pure clarity. There is no question about it. You just know, like I did at the beach in Mexico. It was a warm summer evening. My boyfriend was getting ready for the evening in the hotel room and I sat on the beach. Not a soul was there, but the full moon was. And it was amazing. I remember staring at it in awe and watching the glimmering, playful reflections on the water surface. Suddenly, it happened. Out of nowhere. 
from one moment to another, this deep, painful sadness hit me. Three seconds ago, I was the happiest girl on the planet and now I was heartbroken. And I was shocked because I had no clue what was happening to me. But then I knew. I knew that at this moment, something terrible had happened. The first reflection was to contact my family. I got up, went straight to the hotel room, called my parents, asking if something had happened. I got the answer, everything was okay and that I should enjoy my holidays. This night, I still had a sweet sadness in me. Two weeks later, I landed back home. Again, I called my parents and I remember mom saying, Listen, the night you called us and we told you that everything was all right, it wasn't. But I just couldn't tell you. I knew you would be devastated. That's when I took a deep breath and I remember thinking, it's so true, bad news can be just around the corner. And then she told me what had happened. The night I was sitting at the beach, when this immense sadness came over me. It was the moment where our dog Lupa died. You will know that Lupa was my hero. If you have heard my near-death experience in the mountains where I got lost in a snowstorm and almost died, Lupa saved my life. If you google my TEDx speech, you can see a beautiful picture of her. If someone saves your life, you have a special bond afterwards. And Lupa and I, we were closer than ever. as She was my guardian angel. And we had this symbiotic relationship. I felt safe as long as she was there, but now she was gone. That night, I experienced intuition in a big way, where space and time doesn't matter. Intuition is energy. It's traveling faster than electricity. Coming from somewhere intensively. Sometimes it comes in the form of a very clear answer. It's like knocking on the door, leaving the message gone again. If you don't listen, it will come back. That's good news. But how am I sure that it is intuition guiding me in the right direction or just a feeling showing up. And anyway, can we always trust our intuition? If these questions show up, it's time to get another player on board, the intellect. Usually, if it is this strong, strong intuition, you don't even question it because it's so clear. Now, I'm a thinker. And I love to think about things. And that's why I like to connect intuition with my intellect. Intellect is like the power and technique that is required to catch the fish and reel it in. Intuition knows where we should be casting our nets. It's like my example of mind and heart. I want to use both of them and they need to be on the same page so that I can carry on. And I need to be sure if it is true intuition or, as I said, just a feeling. It's good to be skeptic about emotions or feelings or thoughts. Because a feeling can be wrong. A feeling is maybe created by the ego or by influence or by fear. Meaning, we are not our emotions. We cannot always believe them. With intuition, it's different. And when this is uh, analyzed, and I am sure that it is intuition standing in front of the door, I start to work with it. And I have again a three-letter word for how I do it. L-A-T. Listen, analyze, and if needed, take action. I think the part of taking action is essential. But again, if you don't take action, don't worry. It will show up again. And again, it's up to you 
for how long you can ignore it. I have done it. I have ignored it. What happened? I was frustrated because deep in here, I knew that intuition was right. And when it showed up again, knocking on the door, one day you arrive at the point where it's like, okay, okay, I get it, I get it. And intuition just stands there, looks at you without any emotions, just maybe slightly turning the head to the left, eyes narrowing. And that's when you understand that it is the time where you need to create a plan. Now, what do you think? Can we train intuition to use it in our daily lives? Some say yes, some say no. But it's always worth giving it a try. But the most significant task comes even before starting to work with intuition. It's about creating the optimal environment for intuition to be able to show up. Learn to still the mind. No distractions. Take time. Be with you. Then you can ask the question and see what happens. Is the body sending messages? Try to dialogue with your intuition. Sometimes it's going to be quiet. Sometimes it will give you answers. And suddenly you might feel it getting stronger again. And you can use it more often with people, with work, with decisions. Intuition is a good assistant. And if you can, plan a walk in the woods because intuition loves nature. It loves it so much that sometimes it will show up and walk with you. My dear listener out there, here is my conclusion. If we would give intuition a bit more space and importance, I believe we could save time, reduce worries, avoid regrets and frustration. And to be connected with it makes you not only feel guided, but also grounded, calm and incredibly self-confident. It's nothing else than having a deep trust in yourself. But again, the key is about creating an environment where intuition can show up, which means to be in peace and being fully connected with the inner self. The lockdown, the isolation helped to create this condition. Now the big question is, how can we maintain this when the world starts turning faster again? Thanks God, there is nature. Because nature is an optimal environment to get in this state where you are in peace. It's where the energy is different and it's exactly the energy. Keep nature in your life. Be there as often as possible. Listening to your intuition can save lifetime. Beautiful, isn't it? It's not a diagnosis, an accident or something bigger knocking on the door showing a new path. No, it's beautiful intuition. And yeah, I think it's worth listening to it and analyzing as I would. Now the adventure called Life is On. Can you still feel how we are on this ship together, chugging across the sea? As Yvonne from Zurich wrote in a comment on my homepage, it's a bit foggy right now, the COVID-19 fog taking sight, and that's why it is even more important to listen to intuition. Thank you, Yvonne, for letting me ponder and write about it. And now, let's go for a walk in the woods. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. And by the way, my intuition tells me loud and clear that the Members Club is a good idea. If you like the podcast, there is a big chance that you also will like the Members Club. And right now, I'm working on a question and answer video where I am answering Francesco how my podcast writing process looks like and how I cope with my weekly podcast deadlines. All I can say is it never stresses me, but that's because I have some excellent tools also coming into the Members Club very soon. Take care.